Hey, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rod Kirby Show. I am your host, Rod Kirby. And today, my friends, I'm hanging out with the one and the only Dale Harris. What's up, Dale? What's going on, sir? Man, doing wonderful. Glad to be here, man. Man, thanks for hanging out with me. Dale is a filmmaker and, and an architect, supposedly. <laughs> I, I've learned a lot about you, Dale, and, and the architect just threw me for a loop. I didn't know that you had all this stuff going on along with yeah. the filmmaking, dude. What's going on with that? Yeah, I, I just always been pretty creative. I'm always, uh, I guess, from one creative fashion, from one to the next to the next <laughs> to the next, really. Yeah. Well, uh, Dale, uh, thanks again for hanging out with me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're just hanging out. It's Friday night. You know, we ain't got nothing to do. We ain't got no jobs. We ain't, we ain't, you know, it's Friday. You know, I ain't going to smoke no weed. And I, don't, I don't do all that. But I will talk about movies. I do love talking about movies. And I do love hanging out with other filmmakers. That's why I'm doing this filmmaker hangout with Mr. Dale Harris. Uh, Dale is the director of Allies, which is a film that, that he has coming out very, very soon. Uh, Dale, tell us about your, your project, man. Yeah, I'm super excited about the project Allies. I've been working on it for some years now, and it's finally years. Point, years. It's been and it's been a grind. It's been, <laughs> you know, through the mud with this one, but it's yeah. been, it's it's going to be worth the wait. So Allies is the story of Steve. Steve mm -hmm. is a weary federal agent who takes mm -hmm. on one last case before he retires. Okay. He takes on one last case. He gets sucked back into the underworld, right. and then drama ensues. So it's going to use. It really is chronic. Is chronicles his life his his mm -hmm. ups and downs you see him interacting with his there we go uh with his with his sons with his with his, his friends his his just all of the above is it's, it's a crime drama mm -hmm. um you see him grappling with his relationship with god so there's so many different layers to allies and i think it's going to resonate on a few different facets but it's it's a lot of talented people from the city of memphis that uh, so many people have touched this project mm -hmm. blessed this project so for that reason alone i know it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be well received so i'm super excited about it well let's take a look at this here teaser you got man uh you, you gave me a, a sneak peek at the the trailer that will be dropping soon and we definitely want you to come back to the show to you know debut the trailer and let me tell you guys it's so good okay it's so many good people uh, good friends of mine in the memphis com film community that's that's all in this uh, even uh, the late great Tarsha Gibson was was in there. Uh, rest in peace. She passed away earlier. Uh, was it this year or was it last yeah, year? Uh, February, I believe. February, yeah, yeah. It was earlier this year. Uh, unfortunately, gone too soon. And I absolutely hate that because she's such a such a great actress. But let's yeah, take a look at this. Great person. Too, just, yes. Just, yeah. Had a chance to to meet with her. Never had a chance to work with her, but definitely met her in person at uh, some Right Club events where we were you know, discussing screenwriting. So. Loved working, would would have loved to work with her, but had a chance to see her in a lot of different stuff. So, but let's take a look at this here uh, teaser trailer that you got on your Facebook page, which is mm -hmm. pretty impressive. Oh, that is definitely a tease right there. Yeah, <laughs> right? I need to see more. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's this is it's, it's something super light. I I didn't want to really go through the, the 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 process of making like a brand new trailer, but really what mm -hmm. inspired that was the Barbie movie. Yeah, um, yeah, I really like study the landscape, right? Mm -hmm. So the Barbie movie, I don't know. I, I had the screenshot, <laughs> but let's say first quarter this year. Yeah, they had two posts on their Instagram page for like the longest. It was a teaser trailer coming soon mm -hmm. and then like an actual like one minute trailer. Yeah. So I didn't have, um, then I got a bunch of trailers, I got a bunch of clips, but I wanted, you know, when you tease, I think part of what makes a teaser dope and a trailer dope is when, yeah. you, when you say something, mm -hmm. you give them a little bit, but you don't, you just. Yeah, you gotta give them a little taste, let them come on back for more. Don't give them too much. Don't give them yeah. too much. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave some questions open. So, I just I already had that clip just just anyway. So mm -hmm. I was like, let me put something up. Let me not have like a blank page, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's so that's how that came out. But yeah, uh, you see Robert Taylor Jr. He's a lead actor right there. Mm -hmm. Phenomenally talented. Phenomenally talented. He is one of the most talented people I know for sure. One mm -hmm. of the most talented and hardworking and disciplined. 
yeah. people that I know, period. Wow. Well, you know, I, I like, um, like I said, you, you gave me a sneak peek of the trailer, uh, you know, earlier today, and I loved it. It looks amazing. Cannot wait for everyone to check it out. So if you are interested in learning more about uh, Allies, you can definitely go to Facebook, and it is the Allies web series, uh, at Allies web series, uh, to check that out. And I know you guys are going to love it because I love it already. I haven't even seen the movie yet. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Now, uh, Dale, you know, one reason that I wanted you on this this episode, on this, uh, you know, Friday Filmmaker Hangout is to discuss a little bit of something that I came across, which is today in theaters, you have the uh, the movie, uh, The Creator. The Creator is produced and written and directed by Gareth Edwards. Are you familiar with his work? I am not. Okay. You you may have seen some of his stuff. You may just not realize it, but... Probably so. Um, one thing that it, that that surprised the crap out of me is that uh, create the crater itself was actually produced on a camera that's cost less than four thousand dollars, <laughs> which is amazing. Okay, yeah. so as independent filmmakers, you know we're all, always get the question, Rob, what kind of camera do I need to get to you know make my first short film, or make my first feature film, and I always tell people, and honestly, nowadays in twenty twenty three, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. It just depends on your lighting, depends on your sound. Depends on how you use the camera. You can use a, uh, you know, your phone. It's probably the most powerful camera that everybody has, you know, in their pocket. Um, and I, I, you know, if you know, uh, you know, Bianca McMillian and A.D. Payne, you know, other Memphis filmmakers, they're using cell phones to create an entire TV show, mm -hmm. and it looks good. It doesn't look like crap. It looks great, you know. Yeah, absolutely. See, so you, had, and you really hit the nail on the head because yeah. Now, Technology has progressed in every brand that is there, there is no bad camera on the market, really. You can't even you can't really go wrong. The way I always look at it and what I tell people is like you wanna you wanna you want you wanna you wanna marry the body, but then you mm -hmm. wanna create the lens. Yep. Really, if you really are concerned with getting the 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 super sexy shot that everybody loves with the depth <laughs> of field and the blurry background, mm -hmm. that's gonna come from an upgraded lens so you can have a pretty standard generic um camera body and yep. get you a nice lens yep. and you're really good to go i mean even the camera i shot i mean it wasn't the camera i shot allies on it wasn't a 4k mm -hmm. it was whatever you know multi-thousand dollar camera it was literally uh i think what did i buy that 2017 2018 mm. um Best and the reason I got it because Best Buy had a Black Friday deal on there it. There you go. And I was just like, let me let me get that. So <laughs> I yep. mean, it makes it super simple. So I mean it's like five years old and it still holds up today. So it's one of those things to where, yeah, it's really just a tool at the end, end of the day. Like you can an experienced filmmaker yep. can cut up on the iPhone in a way that's like if you gave a forty thousand dollar red camera to a, a newbie. Yeah, it's not going to be it's not going to be the same. That's so true. It's so true. And uh, I, I had a. Um, uh, a filmmaker um, that I, I interviewed who did entire movie, a Western movie uh, on iPhone, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe it. I mean, I would have I would have considered it at the time, especially at the time of shooting, um, mm -hmm. you know, I had I finally upgraded my phone now, but I was always battling stores and things like that. But I mean, mm -hmm. nowadays I actually have the whatever the the highest storage is on the iPhone. I had that yep. one, and I've made at this point literally thousands of social media clips. Yeah, phone. and it's still on the phone too. It's just like mm -hmm. I really just got it. So you could do a lot with just the technology you already have. Absolutely, Mr. Willie Weeks, uh, filmmaker Willie Weeks says, "Get you a Sony." And you know what? Um, I've heard the things about the Sonys. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, the camera that I'm on now is a Sony A7S II. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is it's older camera. It's probably like five, at least five years old now. Uh, I think the A7S three. I know the three is out, and I think they have the four out as well. But it still serves my needs. And you know what's crazy is the creator of this movie was shot on a Sony camera. It was shot on the Sony FX3. Let me show you this. The mm -hmm. FX3 is a camera that is Netflix approved. 
Look at this. It is this this thing is so tiny. Hold on, let me show you. Let me show you something. Hold on. Everybody, stay right there. Let me show you something. <laughs> so this is the Sony FX3. Look how small it is. Small, less than four grand, and uh, it's a Netflix approved camera. And they shot a eighty million dollar blockbuster movie that just released today on this camera. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hey, it's it's come a long way for sure. And I've heard great things about the Sony's as well, especially capture yeah. like low light type of situations like, mm -hmm. does well in there. So I was actually considering because it is about time for me to upgrade. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm, I have actually filmed in a while. I've been, um, but I'm, I'm gonna get back in the saddle here here soon. About I've been thinking about between the Sony mm -hmm. and, the, and the Black Magic Pocket. Yep. Camera. That's yeah, like the, the, the black magic, it seems like the the go-to budget, like 4K. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people talk about it. A um, lot of folks so, use it, yeah. Yeah, so I'm still open minded. And yeah. I, I'm gonna do a deep dive on it here eventually. So it's and it's coming close to that time. Well, let's take a look at uh this little behind the scenes featurette uh of of the creator of this movie. Now I wanna I wanna show you guys what you can do with a fourth well less than $4,000 uh, camera uh, on a on a big movie budget. So let's take a look at this. This is uh, this comes from IGN and I will leave a link in the comments for everyone to check this out in full. We just, we'll watch a portion of it and we'll talk about it. So let's take mm -hmm. a look at this. Okay, I lied. I said I was just gonna play, play a piece <laughs> of it. But it was like, man, I got sucked in. So, oh my god! Wow, yeah, it looked amazing. It looked amazing. You know what I always pay attention to? What's that? The nighttime scenes. Mm -hmm. The nighttime yeah. scenes is when it really that that separates the fake from the phony. That's yep. when it's just like, because it's one I didn't really realize until I was time for me to shoot nighttime scenes just how mm -hmm. difficult it is. Yeah. Um, one because you're talking about that the grain in the background is, is is makes it hard enough to uh um being able to block the light having mm -hmm. yeah. the actor not in pitch black darkness but having having perfect lighting on the actor and then keeping it dark in the background and not having light spill over yep it's a very tricky is it's a very I tried my best, you know, when I was making allies, it was like, um, <laughs> Ozark, I think has some of the best 
nighttime scene. That was my like uh North Star. Mm. Mm. They they got some good nighttime scenes. Yeah, Ozark uh is such a great show and uh it's <laughs> kind of sad. It hurt my heart that that it, it ended, but you know, um yeah, it was it was great and uh directed by the main star, which is crazy. Yeah, you know? yeah I don't even, I don't even understand how somebody even I, I'm not the, the sharpest tool in the shed. But I like I don't even understand how that's possible. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so real quick, Gareth Edwards, uh, you may he's the director of this this film, and he is known for monsters. And most people would know him for the hey, he's the director of Rogue One, Star Wars story. Uh, did you ever see that? You know what? I've never seen a Star Wars. Get out of here. I'm not even lying. At the front door, walk outside <laughs> and come back in here. You didn't you never seen the Star Wars movies ever. You know, I, I've seen a couple uh like folders and some like okay and some <laughs> I some quit I'm out backpacks. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> this man said he ain't never seen a Star Wars movie. This oh, is oh man, yeah, you know okay. okay Godzilla. I definitely seen Godzilla. Okay, I'm, I'm done that one. So you saw Godzilla, but you never seen any Star Wars movie at all. <laughs> Franchise has been going on since 1970-something. Yeah, that's crazy. And we, uh, shout out to George Lucas, man. We went to the same, <laughs> like, middle school. <laughs> you can't shout out George Lucas. You ain't never seen his movies, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, he got he to gotta tell, you know what it is? What's that? It's kind of like, it's, it's, when, it's, 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 it's when I feel like I'm behind. Mm-hmm. It just feels insurmountable after a cer- certain point. It's just like, right. it's just like Star Wars goes deep. It goes. It does deep. go deep. It's like those. Like so I really have to start back at like, uh, what is that? Like the eighties. Man, Star Wars is like three trilogies. So it's three, six. It's nine movies, and then a buttload of TV shows, toys, books, games. Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Okay, you come to my house. We're having a Star Wars movie marathon. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. Yeah, we. Just, yeah, I gotta get that right now. I gotta. You know what's so crazy about it? There's like, I feel like there's there's a bunch of things that you know. If I were to really just be honest, <laughs> I would be exposing myself as a director that I have not seen. Okay, well, sure. I, I don't want to expose you any more <laughs> than you've already been exposed because any exactly. of these Star Wars fans here that you've never seen or or any kind of Star Wars project, they're going to eat you up alive. So we're going to save you from the embarrassment. <laughs> don't say nothing else, Dale. I got you covered. Don't you worry about it. We're going to catch you up soon enough. I promise. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, so one thing I want to, to point out about uh, the director, Gareth Edwards, is he is definitely an indie maker indie filmmakers indie filmmaker okay this guy on the movie uh monsters which was about two people uh they were they're were going from i think it was south america to north america in a world riddled with monsters like literally monsters made on a five hundred thousand dollar budget super creative movie really awesome and um you know one thing that was really cool about it is that he did all the special effects. So he has a, a special effects background, uh, not just filmmaking, but special effects. And that's kind of how he started. And what I love about, about Gareth is he, he absolutely hates the blockbuster Hollywood movie making machine. So he prefers to shoot with a skeleton crew. So on this movie, the creator, it was just him sound person, uh, most likely his script supervisor and actors. That was it. Okay. That was it on an eighty million dollar movie. That's crazy. Hey, hey, but that's sometimes it's like, do you really? I'm kind of like Elon Musk. Like, do, is all these jobs really necessary? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like sometimes I'm like, there's got to be some money laundering going on because it's like, how? How? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, on my budget, I understand. Like, okay, a little bit of a multiplier, but mm-hmm. it really, yeah, you can go down to the bare bones of something and just do what it takes to get it done. And they're probably way more nimble and way more mm-hmm. just able to adapt and just this the synergy on that set was probably you know way better than it was on a three hundred person set. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw an interview with him where he was talking about um, working on on Star Wars, and mm-hmm. you know, 
I mean, he was grateful for the experience, but it was such an overwhelming experience. I mean, you got 300, you know, crew members, you know, just crew, not actors, but crew members, you know, on, behind the scenes. And he just wanted to just shoot the film and make it as condensed as possible. And one thing that he incorporated, which I really love, he, he called it Indie Hour. So when they wrapped for the day, he said, OK, we're going to take one hour just to get any shot that we want. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what how crazy it is or how silly it is. And that was just his way of doing things, you know, in the indie style. You know, so he would take just a camera. He would operate it himself because, you know, on big blockbuster movies, there's a, you know, cinematographer, there's the gaffers, there's all these people. Directors very rarely touch the camera. OK, so he would actually touch the camera, operate the camera, film it himself. And he, he walked away with so much footage that they use a lot of it in trailers for the, the Star Wars movies, uh, the Rogue One Star Wars movie that actually never it never made the actual movie. It was just for the trailer, which marketing loved him, you know, because they got yeah, too much footage. What I just but, said about the Barbie movie, <laughs> the Barbie movie did the same thing with the, yeah. um, mm -hmm. with the, the, the little mini trailer that they released before. It mm -hmm. was very clear that that was a that was a separate thing that was not a part of the actual film. So it was yeah, mm -hmm. I, mean, it, it, I love it. It's crazy, and and he in this article here, he's talking about how um, I mean, you can see you know that's him there in the center, that's his actors, and honestly, there was n hardly anyone else on that set, you know. But in this article, he talks a lot about why he used uh, the Sony FX3, which is this camera here. He said it has excellent, um, you know, dynamic, dynamic range as well as nighttime shooting. You know, it gets, a, you know, you can almost see in the dark, almost. You know, it's, it's really yeah, awesome. It's great. Yeah, I've heard some 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 success stories off of it. And there you go. Says, I wonder uh, if that was a reaction to uh, to, to COVID. Also, just kind of mm -hmm. how I said, just might probably make it easier to maneuver with some of those regulations. Mm. That's a good, good, good catch. Uh, I would say possibly, but most likely, mm -hmm. this guy's just—he's <laughs> a filmmaking hermit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he's—he's he's in it. But now that's 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 phenomenal, especially on a movie that size. And yep. sci-fi is my bag. Sci-fi is is, you know, if I once I get my money right. <laughs> I'm coming back with a sci-fi joint. Well, look, the first sci-fi movie you need to do is a Star Wars fanfic, just to show that you are with it, and that you are in it there to win go. it. There you go. Look at these uh, these stats for the uh, the FX3. Mm -hmm. So this is the the it's you know it's a Netflix ready camera, meaning that you can use this film, use this camera uh, on productions to be approved by Netflix. Okay, so any independent filmmaker, you if you can scrounge up four grand, four thousand dollars, which is not a lot of money, okay, you know, for a camera, you can even rent this camera. You can rent this uh, at different rental houses. Um, you can have a film that can potentially go to Netflix, which is crazy. But one thing that stood out to me was the on the capture settings. So one thing that over here it says uh, you're looking at a ten bit, four by two by two, six six hundred megabytes uh per second uh which is absolutely crazy so when i shoot on this thing i shoot at pretty much 10 bit four by two by two but it's like 50 megabits per second uh which will which in 4k you know my file size is for like a maybe a five minute video will probably be like you know three two or three gigs in, in file size but if you're looking at 600 megabits per second that's <laughs> that's gigantic that's going to be hundreds of gigs of a, of a video file size, you know, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's a new com new computer to go with that camera. I mean, really, and you like really do hard drives. I mean, this is just what this is what uh, Netflix wants for the production of uh, the camera. If you're going to use a Sony FX3, this is what Netflix wants you to shoot in um, to be approved and put on their platform. Yeah, I you know I, I was looking at the list a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I know I I'm pretty sure the the black mask is on there, correct? I think the I think the six K is on there, because I, I know it it goes it does ten bit four by two by two. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so between both of these cameras are really good entry level points. Um, so and for four thousand dollars, 
And you know, one thing, and mm-hmm. you know, the audience at home still might be like four thousand dollars, and four thousand dollars is, is considerable amount of money. But and what's one thing I had to adjust my brain on? Mm-hmm. Four thousand dollars when you're talking about filmmaking is that's that's nothing. That is like <laughs> like you know, that's some that's like lunch money for real. And so you, you can make a full movie on four grand, and I know people yeah. that that made you know movies on on a little bit more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you really can, and it's just you know you especially with the option to rent. Um, yep. I personally like the the own, especially when on the indie film film like the side because it's like. Mm-hmm. You know, there's cancellations, there's moving, there's, 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 it's best to be nimble. Yes. Best, best to be nimble and it's best to just be able to pick up and go and not mm-hmm. have to just, uh, oh, I got to rent it. Oh, I didn't get this shot. So now I got this camera for the day. Like, you know, just stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to add that to my list on when I, when I, when I get ready here, hopefully by, you know, the next six months or so. It's about time for me to upgrade my my arsenal. And I think it's definitely time for me to uh to add on to mine. I mean, I've got uh, mm-hmm. I've got some gear, but it's not not nearly as much as I would like. I mean, of course, I've got the FX3 <laughs> and I've got a uh, hold on a second. I hold you guys wait just right there. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, get some stuff for you. Okay. So FX3, and this is the lens I use. It's a uh, what is this uh, 24 to 105 lens. Okay. I don't know if you can see that there. Sony lens, uh, FE, you know, this is the um, uh, image stabilization is on here. The optical image stabilization is on here. Really solid lens, really good performer. And of course, we've got the everyone's got your. Yeah. Ronin, uh, this this is the smaller one, the the Ronin gimbal. Oh, so they yeah. got the bigger one. This is the small one. This one is only like two hundred bucks, which is great. Which yeah, is, you know, I bought awesome. mine. I bought mine off of eBay used, and I was looking at the the gimbal that they had in the in the in the behind the scenes for the creator videos you just, just played. Mm-hmm. I, I wonder, I wonder how much that something like that goes for because you notice it was small. It wasn't like yes, it wasn't it wasn't like they had a whole gear and like the whole backpack type of. Nope. Uh, you know, transformer suit type of deal. So it was, <laughs> it was, and that, and that's how I like it because I, I actually shot allies myself. So yeah. ideally, I don't know. I, I I would like to go one round of like me off the camera and see how that works. Mm-hmm. But you know, I personally like. I, I'm. I mean, I like being behind the camera. I like you know getting the shots, getting the angles, making sure everything lines up. Yep. So, and yeah, I think it's super interesting. Let me show you this this picture of uh, on the set of the crater. They have a fully mm-hmm. kitted out FX3. Let me show you this thing. This is ridiculous looking. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. And she had butte. And she had butte. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've yeah. got the camera body, I mean, huge lens, monitor. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is, that's the director right there. You know, oh, yeah, this, yeah. He's in it. Yeah. He is holding that camera behind. You know he's behind there operating that camera, and that's what you don't see a lot of, unless you're uh, Zack Snyder, <laughs> because because <laughs> Zach Zach thinks he's a cinematographer as well. well um, I, yeah, that's, that's pretty remarkable. So he and, and he's doing the special effects. So he man, he's all over the place. Mm-hmm. He, wasn't, he was he wasn't trying to go to sleep. Nah, nah, nah. And <laughs> uh, one one other fun fact about this movie um, and the camera. I'm gonna stop gushing with, over the camera. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just excited. You know about the camera but um this is the first uh this is the first movie or first use of this camera this you know sony fx3 is, is technically it's a, it's a full frame camera it's under four thousand dollars and it's the first camera that they're using to target imax so this is this movie is in imax theaters right now mm-hmm. um and I they shot with, it too yeah yeah and they shot this with this you know four thousand dollar camera that anybody can buy which is uh it's just crazy yeah that's that's pretty remarkable yeah i actually just refreshed myself i saw the trailer when it when it got announced a couple mm-hmm. months ago but i saw the trailer again and once i went to my point earlier the creator trailer does a great job of just telling you just enough information mm-hmm. and then leaves you like who is this child you just know there's a bomb <laughs> that goes off like there's, yep. <laughs> there's, there's a war going on so it's 
Yeah, it's interesting. That's exactly my type of movie for sure. Yeah, I, I think the the general idea of the story is that it's a um it's the human versus AI war. It's like the actual war that's going on. And um so far reviews are kind of kind of you know it's, it's people are saying it's beautiful looking and mm -hmm. it's a decent movie, but it's kind of familiar. You know, it's what I've been what I've been happens. Oh, well, online. How much do you uh how, how much stock do you put in reviews when you going to go see a movie, thinking about watching a movie? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so my wife is going to kill me because she yeah. thinks that I cannot enjoy any movie. But that is not true. <laughs> I watch movies because I'm a fan of movies. I love movies. Sure. I, love, I love cinema. You know, I just love it. So uh, when I go to a movie, especially if it's one that I want to see, I go in generally as a fan until they do something stupid. <laughs> and I'm like, OK. Remember that for later, and I, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I'll bring it back up in, in a review or something. But so you, uh, so you can turn off the switch, you can turn off the, oh, yeah, the filmmaker switch. I, uh, I try, I try. Okay, uh, I, 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 I'm struggling with that piece. I'm struggling <laughs> with that. It almost it's, it's almost just like I'm working mm -hmm. when I'm watching it, and mm -hmm. then I start to feel then I realize I'm not working. And then I start yeah. feeling guilty that I'm not working, and I'm like, "Let me go back to work." <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's it's I get sucked into it. I get sucked into like the angle, the the pacing, the, yeah. the every time there's oh, how many product placements they got, or mm -hmm. this, whatever it is. It's just yep. like I'm I'm paying attention to everything. But let me, I mean, let me ask you a question. Good, I can turn it off. Uh, because I I find myself being I hate to say this, but Sometimes I find myself being hard on indie films. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'll watch a full length, you know, any in the feature film and um, it's from a local creator and I'll just judge the hell out of it. And I feel mm -hmm. I always feel bad about doing that because I am a local creator. I'm an indie creator. I don't want to be hard on, on my peers and I don't say anything. You know, so if sure. it's if it's bad, I don't say anything. The only thing I do is I'll reach out and I'll say, hey, congratulations, saw your film, good job. I encourage people because I want people to honestly move forward and the only way that we all get better is by doing, right? That's so, fact. So I want people to move forward and, and do better and I might suggest things in a nice way. I say, hey, you know, next time you might try this or I saw you kind of um, had this weird shot. You may, you know, take a look at this or, you know, try these little resources here. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean I don't mean in a harm. I'm just trying to help in a big brother type of way, you know. Uh, even though I don't have all the answers myself, I'm still learning myself. But I just find myself being a little hard. Do you do you do that, or is that is, I'm just crazy? <laughs> uh, nah, like I, I'm well. I mean, yes, yes, I I do do that. I'm thinking I'm thinking of my mom because she would she I'll have these conversations with her. Mm -hmm. and, let her tell it. I am just like the the world's biggest critic on everybody. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's is I think it's important. And you know, this filmmaking yeah. thing. If if we're just really just being honest, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very 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 tough medium. It's a, it's a yeah. tough profession. And if you're talking about making a sustainable living from it, yeah, you're not. And this is the filter I've always filtered every step of the way through Allies was if this is not in the top two percentile mm -hmm. of people that do what it do what you do or is what this is then hey throw, throw it out hey, mm. throw it out throw mm. it out it, it, it could be it could be a solid b minus it was a solid c plus right throw it out hey, if it's not in the top two percentile if it's not an mm. a plus then you know because it's it's but it's also one of those things to where yeah i mean it depends because once you make a film especially an independent film yeah you know that any film that exists is a miracle. Yeah. And it's like yeah. so many planets had to align perfectly. <laughs> yeah. For it to be a thing, you know, that person went to hell and back just to see this finish line. So on one hand, you don't want to, um, you want to handle with the, with the, with the grace and the, and the, and the care that, you know, like the, the Erica Badu quote, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thing. Um, and then on the other hand, it's, it's if we're not being honest and, and forthright, then it's tough to grow. It's tough to grow. So, yeah, yep. I, I see. I, I'm I'm 
I'm yeah, yeah. I'm I'm that that's part of the reasons why like I it's probably taken me as long as it's taken me to, to even just finish this project. Hmm. And you know, hopefully the the end product shows that the you know that the, the work can just speak for itself. Yeah. It's like you know, my thing is it's like I d I don't I don't want to put no qualifiers on it. I don't want it to be well, I had a tight budget. <laughs> well, this is my first one. I yeah. For this, I yeah. Don't know what type of deal. Um, yeah. Because you're not gonna be there to, to defend it when you know on a Friday night when somebody just pull it up on a TV and switch it on and see like what's this going on. Mm-hmm. So the work just has to speak for itself. So that's true. But listen, don't 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 be too hard on yourself, Dale. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> You said that it took you years to, to make this project, and I assume it's all because of those general indie filmmaking reasons: money, no time, you know, resources, all that stuff. But oh, yeah. also, also, it's because of us as artists. We're always hard on ourselves on, on our art, you know, and mm-hmm. sharing our stuff. We don't want to, we don't want to look bad. We want to look great. We want everyone to love it. But at the same time, you have to get it out just so you can go ahead, and move forward, and get to the next piece. You know. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. And this is one of those things to where and even 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 like when you're not overly cr- critical on it, like something mm-hmm. just take time, like something that's just true. Take, something's just like, you know, the editing process is what it is. Or just, you mm-hmm. know, the if you're working with a, 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 an actor, an actress and, and they're only available three weeks from now. Right. What you going to yep. do? <laughs> uh, they're only available a uh, yeah. month and a half. What you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Especially Ran into that problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when they're when their likeness is already tied to it. Yep. It's just like which like you kind of, your hands are kind of tied. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things to where you can't you can't rush the process and you That's know true. things take time. And yep. and uh I am I don't I don't want to say I'm part of myself because I mean genuinely genuinely i'm a fan of myself genuinely yeah. like I, I genuinely uh uh more so than not i like the things that i make you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but even when i was making this the biggest thing it, when i especially when i first started off it was mainly i because i was coming from architecture mm-hmm. and I, I i was pretty good in architecture but i hated it like i just couldn't I couldn't like just the sight of it. It got to the point where I was just it was just the sight of construction drawings was just make my blood boil type of thing. So <laughs> I just needed I needed a whole refresh, right? Right. But 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 I was but I genuinely was pretty good at the profession. So it's just one of those things to where um I had to make something good enough that nobody would tell me to go back to architecture type of deal. So I was more so competing with my like past self, and that's really all I really try to do is just be better than I was yesterday and just keep it rolling yeah absolutely and you know it's uh it's crazy because you know we we work full-time jobs most of us do some people are lucky enough to dive headfirst and they they try to do filmmaking full-time uh which is hard filmmaking is is hard by itself and then when you don't have that support system behind you it gets double hard okay triple Mm -hmm. hard it just becomes super hard to do um but I really I applaud people that like just go for it. Yeah. And it's easier if you don't have a family. You know, I'm I'm married and I have a, a great wife and a great son. And it's it's hard to do anything because I have to support them. Um, but at the same time, they're supporting me, you know, and mm-hmm. it's a back and forth and and we just make it work, right? Um, so I applaud every filmmaker, you included Dale, for just going for it and going for your dream and not letting anything stop you. And whether you have a project that is uh, an Academy Award winning or not Academy Award winning, but Academy Award qualifying project or a project that is, you know, OK, it's not so good. But, you know, whatever it is, just go out and make films, you know, just yeah, go, do yeah, it. Just go ahead and do it. You know, I think so many times, you know, <clears throat> myself included, you know, we get get it in our head, mm-hmm. in our head and, and oftentimes we put obstacles in a or, or roadblocks or or, or barriers yep. on ourselves and on our life that 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 is artificial. It's it's, it's a smoke screen. It's not mm-hmm. it's not a real thing. It's just like <laughs> like, <laughs> it, like I don't want to get like existential, but like everything's made up. 
everything's made up. You, you you choose your own meeting. You wake up and you know you can you can decide to be anything you want to be. So yep. I always kind of look at it like, hey, every day's a, a fresh fresh day to start something new. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like the way things is going today, hey, tomorrow don't have to look like that. Yeah. And uh, that's that's why I so I so again just to be clear, I am I do go a little hard on indie films that I watch, whether it's a short film or a feature film. That's only because I honestly want people just to get better, and I want people like I don't want to get better, you know, at the mm-hmm. craft of filmmaking. Um, but I I never discourage anyone, and I never put anyone down. I'll never write a uh, a mocking review and say this is the worst movie I ever saw, and you know look at all these mistakes they made because someone's going to do that same thing to my artwork and I don't want that. Mm-hmm. So all I do is I encourage and I encourage you to con- con- continue. And to, I'm looking forward to seeing allies when it finally drops. Cause I know it's going to be awesome because you've got the eye, you've got that magic eye Hoyt. Okay. <laughs> this training days, Denzel is my fake Denzel voice. I can't really do it that well, but you got the magic eye Hoyt. Okay. You got it. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just looking forward to, to what you make. And we got a comment from Mr. Christy Hodges. The wake up and decide to be anything you want to be. That's right. You go, girl. That is right. Be anything you want. Christy got it. She got it. She understands it. Absolutely. Yeah, th- thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with us, Christy. And Kimberly, we saw you. Thank you so much. And Willie Weeks from early, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, man, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm, I'm not going to hold you. And I don't want to hold anyone else uh, tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Mm-hmm. Before we get out of here, before we get out of here, we've got some church announcements. Can the church say amen? Amen. Take us to a- church. Amen. Okay. Uh, church announcements. So we've got a lot of things coming up on the channel. So next week, I have an interview with the founder and CEO of Screen Indie. And Screen Indie, go to their website real quick so you guys can see that. Screen Indie is a social streaming platform for independent filmmakers which okay. is really cool Let's see this will bring it up and it's a screen indie all right here we go there you go so screen indie it's, it's uh they so it's a really interesting platform where you can uh it's kind of like tubi almost mm-hmm. but it's really geared for independent filmmakers um, you can put a film on there. Uh, you can set pricing for rentals or purchase, whatever. And also there's the social aspect of connecting with other filmmakers. And I was able to, uh, I was actually able to connect with um, a filmmaker on here that I'll be interviewing as well on tomorrow. I'm talking to Mr. PJ. Oh my God, I forgot his name already. His name is PJ. I'm just going to call him PJ. Just going to call him PJ. He has an awesome film, any film. It's a, uh, Academy Award qualifying film called North Star. And you're going to learn all about that uh, once I get done with this interview on tomorrow. But next week, I have the founder and CEO of Stream Indie. His name is Richard Turrentine. Had a great time talking to him. That interview is in the can. So you'll be able to see that on uh, next week. Uh, also, I'm starting a new series where I'm going to be breaking down the movie making success tips from famous film directors. People that I love, like Tyler Perry, like Steven Spielberg, Ava DuVernay. Okay, those people I love. Who's your favorite film director, Mr. Dale? Oh, man, so many. Um, <laughs> all the ones you just named, uh, Issa Rae. Issa Rae, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's too, probably too many to name, all of them, really. Like, well, I, I'm just, the, I'm really just a fan of the genre, a fan of, mm-hmm. of, you know, what I grew up watching. You know, I, I remember just being in middle school and just, I thought the boondocks was the coolest. <laughs> funny. I love I'm talking about, I would be ro- I would be laughing until my, my, my stomach hurt. Mm-hmm. But like, just, you know, there's stuff, stuff like that. Aaron McGruder. So it's just like yep. legendary Spike Lee. Yeah. Um, Spike Lee's one of my favorites too. Yep. Mm-hmm. I had a chance to meet him too. Uh, oh, he, yeah? he came to, uh, he came to Memphis uh, years ago. Um, this was back. This was back when Memphis was going going through that time where they were talking about uh, infant uh, mortality rates. Okay. And he came to my church at World of Comers and um, yeah, got a chance to, to, to see him speak and talk to that man for just a half a second. This was really before I was really, 
really into mm-hmm. filmmaking. I was like on the cusp of, of becoming a filmmaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I didn't. I gushed when I saw him, but I didn't like. Ooh, <laughs> can I work? Can I work for you? Can I, you offer me a job? Can I go back to New York with you? I didn't yeah, do all yeah, that. Yeah. I wanted. I would now if I met him now. I saw him at the yeah, airport. Do your shot. You know, yes. Like, okay. Shot, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I've got a new series coming up. Um, where I'll be breaking down. Tyler Perry and Ava DuVernay and all these other different directors, the different things that we as independent filmmakers can learn from them. So you definitely want to subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed uh, so you can stay um, so you can stay up to date on that stuff, man. So I got a lot of good stuff coming. So go to YouTube right now and hit subscribe is at Rod Kirby on YouTube. Subscribe so you can stay in the know. Hit the notification bell button. Okay. So that you can be notified when I have new videos that drop every single week. And that will do it for tonight. Thank you, Dale, for, again, for hanging out with me on the Rod Kirby Show. Thank you, everyone that's been watching and hanging out with us on tonight. Stay tuned because next week I might do it again. I might have another guest with me next week. You never know who. So, again, subscribe. You can find me on YouTube at Rod Kirby. You can also find the show on Facebook. as at Rod Kirby Show on Facebook. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Peace out, and good night, everyone. Thank you for watching.